I'm uh, today here with uh, Rachel Wallace, and Rachel is the Managing Director of Workware Warehouse in Burnley. Welcome, Rachel. Great to see you. Good to see you. Kick off, Rachel. Tell us a bit about Workware Warehouse. What's it all about? Uh, well, we are based in Burnley up on Farrington Court. Um, obviously, we do workware, as the name would suggest. Um, we do all our own in-house print and embroidery. Um, and we stock quite a large range of workwear. I've got two websites, um, Workwear Warehouse, um, which is more your unbranded workwear. Um, and I also have a website called Scandi Workwear, which stocks all of the sort of premium Scandinavian brands like Heli Hansen, Fristad's, Black Larder, um, ones where the brand is a little bit more familiar. Right. All right. So so you have the brand and the company's logo and things like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. It, some of it is a bit more specialist stuff. So it's things like fire resistant workwear and um, clean room garments, obviously a really good range of high quality um, high vis workwear. So it's a lot of things worn by offshore um, where probably the weather is a little bit more um, temperamental and you need to be better protected. Absolutely, yeah. And, um, you so know, what... those brands are a bit more expensive, but they, they do the job very well. So um, are, are you quite local or national or international? Where, where's the spread of custom and what type of custom have you got? We sell nationally, um, particularly yeah. on the websites um, and internationally, actually. We've just sent orders across to the Middle East, um, Singapore, Australia. Um, so there is a demand for the brands. And I think we, you know, we have that demand because we're English speaking. So they tend to come to the UK rather than um, going to Sweden. Um, but with Workwear Warehouse, we also supply a lot of local companies. We supply Burnley College, Burnley Football Club, um, Matthew Kibble Transport. So we do a lot of, um, you know, embroidery and branded workwear, safety footwear for a lot of companies around the area. So you're selling locally, nationally and internationally. What do you, What is it, do you think, Rachel, that differentiates you from other options that might be out there because you, you've clearly got a, an extensive demand there um what has made a difference um i think really the service was one thing we noticed we set up during covid and um, so i think you know the fact that there was somebody we always answer the telephone and um, we always answer an email within a few hours and i think that kind of personal touch rather than getting frustrated using a bot on a website makes a big difference. And Absolutely. the fact that you can just ring up, speak to us, tell us what you need, and we'll email, you know, the options straight over or give you some guidance on what's required. So I think that personal service and being available has made a big difference to us. Um, and also the brands that we have in stock, um, you know, particularly the Swedish brands. I think we're one of the only websites that has all of those brands under one umbrella. Wow, well done. That's a great achievement then. Yeah, we've been proud of that. It's been a lot of work, but yeah, it, um, we kind of, we like the quality of the Scandinavian brands um, and just really tried to focus on that kind of end of the market um, and the specialist, which is where we sort of grew the business because um, you know, the workwear warehouse and, and you know, local business that um, there is a, a lot of scope for that. But I think there's also a lot of demand for those more premium brands, particularly with sustainability becoming um, more important to a lot of customers because it's kind of like the buy cheap, buy twice model versus spending that bit extra with something that's got guarantees to, you know, last the uh, you know test of time um, and washing and industrial laundering and things like that and I guess employees feel good wearing good stuff don't they absolutely yeah we supply um, I think one of our best case studies is Manchester cabins over in Oldham and you know I think they would say themselves they pretty they bought some pretty awful workwear to start off with um, and they kit their guys out in some really premium black larder suits from head to toe, including the footwear. 
Uh, and it's stuff that the guys want to wear and like wearing, so they're not battling them to get them into their, you know, put their boots on on site. Um, and also the perception, because they they create, um, you know, they convert these storage containers into homes for people that when they're working away on building sites and motorway developments and things, and at the end of the day, their staff are walking into somebody's home if they go to do a repair or do some work there. And the fact that they're well dressed rather than looking like they've just stepped in from anywhere makes a big difference to, you know, you handing over your keys to your home to let them walk in. So you're adding value to their image and uh, and, and the perception that they're, they're creating, really. Yeah, I mean, they've got good staff retention. So, you know, that helps as well. It's worth investing in good gear um, mm. for the employees. Um, but it all contributes towards it, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what does the future look like, Rachel? What, what are the what are the challenges, first of all, ahead? Oh, there's lots of challenges at the minute. <laughs> um, well, we've just invested in a new embroidery machine. And um, so that's increased our productivity hugely. Um, so we had a machine previously, but we've, you know, we've invested in a forehead machine. Um, we got some good help from Boost Lancashire. Um, and that's meant we've been able to produce, uh, to increase our productivity fourfold, really. And um, so it's meant that we've, we've won a few good new contracts recently. Um, and those would have had to have been outsourced if we hadn't have bought the machinery. So we can now turn those around quicker and um, we can get them out to the customer quicker and we can take on bigger orders. So, you know, that's um, been a big investment, but I think one that's worthwhile for us. Um, we rebuilt the Scandi Workwear website last year and we are just in the process of redoing uh, of doing the same with the Workwear Warehouse website. Um, so that's always a challenge, particularly with the number of products and variations um, that we have. Um, I think cash flow is always a challenge, particularly for a new business. I mean, so, you know, we're in our fourth year now, but we set up kind of without any investment um, or overdraft, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, so that's well, always been a challenge for us. Um but one that we've managed to overcome, um, you know, and year on year we keep growing. So hopefully continue heading in the right direction. So challenges and uh, opportunities all combined there, really? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think at the moment, because, um, you know, we tend to find you'd like your growth to just go on a steady increase, but unfortunately it kind of, goes like that particularly for us at the moment so it's it's trying to retain that focus on you know which parts we need to concentrate on at, at which time um you know because everything can always be invested in but you know we haven't got unlimited funds to do that well it sounds like the trend is that way which is which is positive anyway touch wood yes yeah yeah Good. yeah so rachel what would you say you've um you've learnt over those four years what have been the the learnings for you um i think largely that i'm more resilient than i thought i was um i've learned more patience it's not something i've always had in buckets <laughs> but i think i've definitely found that i have the ability to be more patient um and you learn plenty of things along the way i've learned the value of really good staff make a huge difference to what you do and it's worth investing in them and keeping um them happy and on board with you um networking has really helped me over the last few years um you know it's it's definitely helped um increase the business in quieter periods and just having that support and help from other people trying to push business your way um and give you help and advice um has been a has definitely been a plus point. So I think I would have started the networking a lot earlier. Um, I've just forgotten the question. Oh, well, just learning. So the, some great, some great shares. The learnings. There, yeah. Some great um, shares. Yes, and I think I probably would have invested um, more heavily in my website at the beginning. 
I mean, it's always a challenge because we didn't necessarily have the big money to invest in the website. Um, but it's kind of one of those things of, you know, well, my own mantra really is do something cheap and end up doing it twice. <laughs> so actually, right, yeah. maybe I should have spent twice as much money at the beginning and found a way of managing that. Um and, you know, there's lots of help out there, really. You know, the Chamber of Commerce has been a huge help to us. Um, Boost Lancashire have helped us on a couple of projects. Um, and, you know, there are often things I thought, oh, yeah, there's help out there, but they won't look at businesses like ours. But they do. And, you know, they've we've had some really good help and advice and support. Um, Rachel, there's some great shares there. And I'm sure everybody watching and listening will uh, get some real value from that. And I wish you all the best for the future with those challenges and opportunities. Thank you very much, Mick. Well That's done. gone Thank quick. You. <laughs>